giveaway. Stay tuned to the end of the video. Welcome back, y'all. Jason and Michelle, hey. <laughs> and we are the Echo Nesters. Want to thank you for joining us and subscribing to our channel. And if you're just now getting used to us, stick with us. You're going to enjoy this. So, this is Bad Betty. She is our 2022 Winnebago Echo built on that Ford all wheel drive transit chassis. We love Bad Betty. We love how Winnebago put this on that chassis. There's yeah. so many things we talk about in all of our videos that we just love. We do troubleshooting, the list goes on. But today, we thought we would bring to us, what would you call it, our top 10? Our top 10 favorite uh, RV accessories RV, that we yeah. that we always have on board. Or Yeah, and some of the using? stuff, uh, we had like 40 or 50, but we had to <laughs> tailor it down. Yeah. So uh, I guess the first thing that we'll start with is talking about when we get ready to go get set up. Uh, there's a couple of things that we do. We've got our boondocking experience. We're out in an area like this where there's no, let's just call it resources per se, and we rely on Bad Betty's awesome power, her holding tanks, uh, the water she can carry the whole bit. And then there's the times where we're at a couple of KOAs or we're checking out an experience where they got plugins and they've got uh, some resources on board. So as we cover, I would say, the gamma of the items that we, we call our top 10, yeah. we're gonna touch base on both elements. So the first thing I'd say is when we first pull up and we're getting set up, Michelle is a big fan of kind of staging the area and yeah. making it feel like at home. So tell them about our rug. Well, we just love this outdoor rug. It's a nice lightweight material and it's reversible and it lays really nicely. Easy to clean, uh, shake out. And it keeps out. your feet cozy over all this gra uh, gravel and rock. So I think our first item would be an outdoor rug. That's and uh, we'll have a link on our uh, uh, Amazon affiliate site if you're interested in it. I think they have a couple other patterns. Yeah, they have different designs. I think the but reason Michelle kind of went with this one, if you see the pattern, it's got a little bit of the echo know, vibe going. Rolls the echo vibe. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing that we're going to, well, why don't you tell us about the other oh, thing? Oh, our folding table. Our folding this table. This is our new favorite folding table. Why, why don't you show them? Well, this I could tear it down. You know what we'll do? I think, you know, since we're just kind of shooting. <laughs> and ad lib in here. Just to tell you guys, we actually don't write scripts <laughs> in the beginning. We just come out here and we just roll with it. Yeah. So the folding table, actually, uh, how I stumbled across that, I'm on a Facebook group. And I saw somebody that had one in the background. And it was a different name, a different version. I was pretty fascinated with it. So I hit him up, asked a few questions. We picked this one up. And I'll, I'll be straight up with you. When I first got it and I was pulling it out of the bag, mm -hmm. I was a little concerned. And I almost like, this just feels chintzy. But then I put it together and I understood why it felt the way it felt at the time because it needs to be lightweight. But once you assemble it, the thing that you'll notice later and you'll notice in of our videos, and I'll just kind of drag you guys over well, here real actually, quick. actually, why don't we get a closer look on this? So let's come back in a minute and okay. you can show them how you set it up. Yeah, we can do how that. how use it. So we can do that. Be right back. So if you can imagine that this whole table, this setup, fits in this bag. It's about what's well, a little smaller than a chair bag. So I'm going to toss this aside real quick. You might also notice that some of my favorite barbecue utensils sitting right in here. In some of our videos, I drop my knives in, my cut cutlery, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to set that up in there. But I'm not going to tear the whole thing apart. But I'll just kind of give you an idea of, if I was to disassemble this, how quick and easy it would be. I could fold this up, roll it right off the top, and move it aside. And then what's really nice is that as I disassemble these, they fold up. So if you can imagine this entire table collapses into that bag. And then as you, I, I've demonstrated in other videos, the setup is pretty straightforward. And then our lightweight tabletop, I mean, I'm talking lightweight. I'm sorry about all the, probably the noise that we're picking up on the mic from me banging this around. But this just kind of clips here, sits right over. Just very, very simple as you see. And what's really nice so that this stays locked in, a couple of plastic clips, you move them, you set them in, and for lack of a better word, you are ready to do some things. Now, the thing that I had mentioned earlier is the adjustable legs. You can change the height. So if you're in uneven ground like we are now, with the just uh, rotating this, you can raise and lower the leg. But what's really nice is the feet conform to the ground. That was one of the things that really stood out for me on this table. And just for clarification, we are not sponsored by this company. Um, it just happens to be a table we love. I have used it like crazy. I put my trail fire on here. 
I think the only thing we haven't done is dance on it, but maybe we'll try that out. Right. But <laughs> but the adjustable feet really speak to me because yeah, a lot of the could lower it and we could move put it with over it over here as a little cocktail table, or you could keep it this height and use it as a little bar. Oh yeah, you could use it as a bar, yeah, whatever you it want. It's versatile. We love it. So that is the second thing that we love. It's our favorite. It's got the basket. You can store some extra goodies down here. As you know, we love our Trail Fire Grill. We've had this thing nearly two years now, and I cook we cook like crazy on it this happens to be the bag for it and the reason that we love it so much is at least in Oregon and maybe across other parts of the country you'll find that having a natural wood burning fire even charcoal or barbecue pits per se are a little off limits right now especially just kind of due to some of the forest fires and the things that are going on so we call this the four-in-one it's got a built-in walk right there we have a pizza stone, which you can see we have abused and used. And of course, you got your grill, you got your lava rocks, and then you've got your cord. Now, the nice thing about this is, let's say that you're just sitting around and enjoying your evening, and you happen to have a Winnebago Echo. When this arrives, you're going to actually have a different hose, a different fitting, and it's really super easy to change out, but the other fitting is made to adapt to like a 20 pound or a 10 pound propane cylinder. What we did, and we'll have a link for this, is we swapped out the cord, or if you will, the LP line. And because Bad Betty is equipped, and Michelle's demonstrated this before with an outdoor quick connect, we just go like this, we kick it on, and we're and set. We're propane, this, we're golden. this happens to be a 12 foot cord they do sell these in up to 20 feet um i i have no idea what that would mean in this respect one of the other questions that we get though is do you need a regulator with this the answer to that is no and i'll really quickly tell you why because it's pulling off of one of the 20 pound cylinders here these already have the built-in regulator so the thing that we've noticed is that you don't have to worry about that so that's going to segue us into one other thing let's say that you're at an event or you're just having a great time out there and a bunch of friends and it's time to bring a fire pit over and you're like well i don't have 50 100 feet of lp hose and nobody should expect that i'll show you what we keep on board follow me all right so we left off that we have a quick connect right here with bad betty by going to our affiliate link on amazon and picking up a different style hose now you might be asking yourself, well, let's just say that my buddy's down the way here. If you kind of peek down here, those are all my buddies right there waiting for me. And uh, they have some 20 pound cylinders down there. And tonight we're going to get down. We're going to fire this bad boy up. We're going to cook. We're going to stay warm. We're going to make some cookies, pizza, all the things we love to do on our trail fire. Well, obviously I can't get 400 yards, right? Well, that's where plan B comes. So as you know from other videos, and maybe you don't, I love my cargo bags. This one is one of my heaviest bags. I keep a lot of stuff in here. We can go over that later. Of my things that I keep in here is my quick connect adapter. What this is designed to do is to go onto such as a 20 pound cylinder. If you notice, let's assume that this cylinder was out of Bad Betty and I'd hauled her down the way so we could hang out with our friends. I would just basically make the same connection here. What's nice, it has a built-in regulator. And then I would grab my hose. I would do the same thing, pull the collar back, make a quick connect. What's nice is I can lock it in, unlock it, and I can connect directly to a cylinder tank when I have to move away from Bad Betty's very convenient port. So this is another one of our favorite items. Again, we have a link for this as well. There's lots of brands out there. We've been using this for a while and we're pretty satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna toss that on over there and I'm gonna ask Michelle, what should we go to next? One of my very favorite things I've had for quite a while, these are the cargo bags. As you can see, if you drift around here with me, what I do is I carry three and I've got them stacked up. And for me, I, I've got them kind of labeled, if you will, in my mind based on the way they're stacked and what I carry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull another one out just as an example here. And this also helps demonstrate how tough or how strong this table is. There's a lot of stuff in here. Y'all are gonna see in a minute. So let's swing right around here to our Bad Betty bag, okay? And I open up here. I've got quite a few tools in here. Again, 
I've got my cylinder adapter, I've got some hand sanitizer, some other items, if you will, that are important to me in the tool aspect. A little more than some might carry, but we'll talk about that in another video. And then when I come into here, I know that this is my recovery gear. And what I mean by that is my kinetic rope. As you may have seen in some of our videos, if you haven't, I invite you to. Bad Betty has a full CA tune recovery package on her with a Warren winch. And what do I have here? Search and rescue. Because sometimes <laughs> we got to get down and do that stuff. I've got some rain gear. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. And these hold up well. And then in my bottom bag, besides some other cords, some connectors, I also keep, believe it or not, my Winnebago manual in here. If you guys want to see that right yeah, there. Show them what it I mean, just as an example, first aid kit down up in here. I've got some fly fishing gear and then my Winnebago manual, my cord, etc. Now you might store things that are best for you, but what I like is these just stack up. The other nice thing about these bags that makes them my favorite Let's say, and I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to tear down my gear, but I only wanted a portion of this bag. I can collapse it. And as you can see, if I went to collapse it, these are going to start to interconnect with each other. I can even come all the way down to here and completely fold it away. So these are probably, I mean, I got so many things I love. Like I said, we had the tail list down from about 40, 50 items. And I just finally caved into what Michelle said. These are essentials, really. I love these. They go everywhere with me. They're durable. Yep. They're in lots of our videos. I throw them out. So, Shell, where do you want to take them next? Uh, let's go for the surge protector. You want to do surge protector? Yeah, we'll be right back. In case we're like at a KOA or something for cool. sure, yep. Those All right, let's do it. very good to have. Should we just head over? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. If you guys are wondering where we're at, we're just outside of Rufus, Oregon. This right here is the beautiful Columbia Gorge. There's some uh, some windmills up there that are generating power. Turbines, yeah. There's a dam Turbines. down the way. I don't know. Can you catch this dam down here, Shell, just to the east? Uh, yeah. And we're giving you a little, a little distraction bit. here, but this is such a beautiful part kind of the of country a fun in Oregon. Spot people could uh, do a little boondock in here. So, oh, surge protector. Yeah. <laughs> in my right. brain, we we're going to water. <laughs> so, surge protector. So right here on the Echoes, they've got a little storage compartment. Some people keep, and so do we, um, our gray water sewage, drain hose, etc. I just choose to keep my surge protector here. It's a little 30 amper right here. Um, again, the reason, and I, and I talked about this in one of our other videos, the reason that I chose this one is it was affordable. It's about $60. It meets all the requirements that I'm going to need. It tells me, hey, where are the circuits being analyzed from? Um, as an example, do we have an open circuit? Um, is there an open hot? Is there an open neutral? That's all indicated right here. If we were at a campground, as an example, and we were going to hook up to some shore power, I would plug this in, go ahead and run my cord, if you will, that's in my one bag over there, right to here. I would plug in, pretty simple, and after I've made the plug in, let my cord drop out, because this is kind of a little bit of a rain protector. And then I would kick on the circuit that's on the main, I'm going to call it the main meter, the main box there at the campground. And that would be, of course, after we know what all the power indications read. So just kind yeah. of in reverse order there. Sure. We're going to plug in, mm -hmm. have the power on. It's going to tell us and what's happening. We are also demonstrating this in the drive-in. Um, oh, the drive-in. Yep, so, the yeah, KOA. check that out. Where was that at? What part that of Oregon? That was in... Uh, I think it was called Sutherland. Yeah, Sutherland. Sutherland. Yeah, yes. had an awesome KOA. So yeah, check that video out and you'll see the surge protector going to use. All right. Since we're here, should we move on over to some of our other goodies? Yeah, let's our do favorites? it. All right. So on a Winnebago Echo, this is basically the water distribution control panel. Your outdoor shower, it's heated. When the climate changes, you can flap this open and whatever the temperature is inside that you have working off your awesome Truma system is going to keep this compartment warm. Why? Because we have some pretty thick insulated doors here. Now, what I typically keep in here is my quick connect shower connection. Just like that, we got water and I could spray Michelle. Mm -hmm. Might not be a, bit, a good idea right now. <laughs> she might get a little excited Actually, it's kind of hot out here. That could feel good. So we'll start with my little Camco product here. Um, so let's assume that you're about to head out for some boondocking and or you want to keep some water on board and you just filled up at the house, the neighbor's house, wherever you can get your water source from. This is typically where you would fill from, right here. It's a little different from our city water connection, which is going to be just basically a hard connection where we're constantly getting the water from. And we're going to go over that in a moment. 
One of the things is if you've got your hose and you're trying to cram it in here, it might be a bit of an obstacle. So what you can do is just thread the hose on here. It's got a shut off. Stick the tube right down into there and that helps you out. Part of what I do, and I actually have a video on this as well, is we picked up this little water meter. And what it does is when you turn it on, let's assume that we're connected here. And I went ahead, might as well just do it just for kicks here. We'll make another assumption. This is my big garden hose, if you will, and it's headed on over to my fresh water source. And I want to fill Bad Betty up with at least 50 gallons of water because that's what she holds on the fresh water side. Well, I may go inside and start doing things. I might start putting some things. I might grab some of Michelle's curling irons, right, Michelle? Oh, funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. funny she said. But I might be loading up Bad Betty and I've got this thing filling up and I'm inside and I keep looking at the gauge, basically on the control panel kind of tells you, and I get distracted and I come outside and I run back in, I might have an overflow. Now it does have a vent and it does allow for overflow. So we wouldn't have too big of a problem there. But what's nice is when I'm out here working on Bad Betty and I'm doing some things, I can just come right over here to my meter. It's digital. It'll tell me how many gallons Bad Betty has received. Sorry, I turn it back on there. It self times out. And you know, I'll basically know, have I put in 49, 50 gallons? It doesn't really matter. The other nice thing is if you're a gardener, you could probably use this to regulate how much water you're putting in your garden. So this is another one of our favorite items we keep with Bad Betty. And you know what we should do? I think we should move right on to the next water feature. Yeah, what right do you here. think? All right. <laughs> so in my little 8 billion bag right here, check this out, y'all. What is this? Look at that. Oh, it's pretty too, shiny. right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Shiny. Yeah, we got an adjustable <laughs> knob right here. You just kind of pull up. So what is this? This is a water pressure regulator. You might ask yourself, why is this important? When would I use it? So I'm at a campground. We were at a campground in Idaho just not too long ago. And when I went to connect the hose and I was just rinsing a few things off and I was taking care of some things, not actually using their water source for Bad Betty because we had plenty on board. I kicked that thing off and it would have probably knocked a small person like a child over pretty quickly. That's how much pressure was coming out of there. If I had connected that hose directly here to this connection, fired it up, my guess is it probably wouldn't have blown any of my water lines per se, but it probably could have damaged my water pump and or other items inside. So what this water pressure regulator does is let's pretend for a moment that I'm right at the connection source and I've got this threaded on here and I'm getting ready to run my hose, if you will, over here to Bad Betty. And I kick on the water. I can actually see how many PSI, if you will, of water pressure is coming through. And if it's too much or too, well, if it's too little, you don't have much of a choice there. But if it's too much, I can just raise this and simply dial it in and lock her in. So I would highly, highly recommend, just like a surge protector to protect your all your electronics and your vehicle, you carry one of these around. Um, you might argue and say, well, the campground's responsible for the pressure there, this, that, and the other. Well, if you want to have that argument, that discussion with them, rather than pick one of these up for about $30, and I'll have a link for that as well. You know, that, that's your call. It's not something I would challenge, but so should we move on to the, the yep, next one? We'll be right, All right back. Let me put my goodies away. What do we got, Shell? We have our magnetic paper towel holders. We love them. Number nine. Number nine shine. on the list. We love these. We use them all the time. They attach right here. You get your paper towel, set it right there, grab the top, Put it right there and bam, there we go. Very nice, very nice. Very convenient when you're doing, we do a lot of stuff outdoors, so this makes perfect sense. So we always have this on hand and we could just take the paper towels out when we're getting ready to leave and you could actually leave these installed and they fit perfectly right inside the tail package. Oh, that's right. So yeah. Just tucks away. You can get these at um, the Home Depot. Yes, you can. Jason's favorite store. So uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Number nine. Should we move to 10? Let's go to 10. That would be the bug zapper. Here we go. Tell us about the bug zapper, Well, Shell. this is a lifesaver because we actually had to leave our last site when we were in Boise. Was that the Boise. Idaho boondocking? That was the Idaho boondocking. You want to tell us about it? Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you could do it. No, you, you right. experienced this a little more. Well, let me switch the camera okay, with yeah. you here. Let me do that. So you might be asking <laughs> yourself, 
<laughs> what are they doing with this little tiny bug zapper? And there's it's a bug really right cute. there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. When you're thinking about storage, weight, and convenience of keeping things tucked away, fits right in there. But you might be saying, hey, what is this going to do for bugs and why would I want something this small? Well, the nice thing is, let's just say that you needed three of these. And as an example, you're like, you know what? I'm going to stick one right here on the tire, fire it right up. I'm going to put one other at the uh, front of the tire. And maybe I'm just going to drop one just in front of us. Yep. You're going to draw the bugs away from you. It's not big. It's not bulky. You don't have any risk of it breaking, collapsing, etc. The other nice thing is, and it's, it's daylight out here, so it has... Um, Ambient light. It does. Oh, there we go. Let's actually yeah. move into the garage. We can That's show them a little bit of light. And I think you this... know, space is minimal, so we, we're, we're pretty happy with this little little so, contraption. You see the glow. That's where the bugs would get shocked, for lack of a better word. That's low, mm -hmm. medium, and high. So basically, you have a flashlight or a light, and at the same time, obviously, you have the bug zapper. Now, yeah. you could hang it back in here. Yeah. The other nice thing is... You can bring this inside. Let's say that for some reason, somebody left the door open, maybe, <laughs> and uh, some of our friends decided they wanted to hang out with us. Yep. And uh, well, we want them to move away from the bed. So I might set this up towards the front of Bad Betty, maybe on the dinette table, down on the floor, etc. So this is also available on Amazon. They're about $20 each. And what's really cool? USB, yeah. right? Charge your phone on the bug zap. Bug zap. And <laughs> this lasts a really long time. So I would say that if you picked up about three of these, to be quite frank with you, you could set a pretty good perimeter away from you and they're going to take care of business. They're lightweight, convenient. They're pretty durable. I think it's one of our favorites. Yeah. Would I like you say it. that? Yeah, we, can, we could head out to Mosquito Town. We can go to Mosquito and Town. And feel like we're, we're going to survive. <laughs> All right. Stay there. So we can do a little more adventurous boondocking now. So there you go, guys. Yep. Yeah. Not only is this our top 10 right now, and that could change, we got some other stuff to show you in the future, but this is one of our top 10 places to be right here. Yep, the along beautiful this. Columbia Gorge. It is gorgeous here, folks. Yeah. Um, as you, if you ever get a chance to come to Oregon, or if you wanna check out some of our videos, we tend to find some places that we'd encourage the rest of you to go. Yeah. Um, again, I think Michelle and I just want to close by saying for all of our subscribers and the folks that return and leave comments and ask questions, whether they're just basic questions about a product or tech questions, we actually really enjoy it. it what would you say? Sometimes we're just laying in bed and we got, oh, we got a comment and a yeah, question. We and, get excited. And we do. And <laughs> uh, we're grateful for that. We never take it for granted. And when you do hit the like button and uh, you do subscribe, it does somehow help us in the YouTube world of algorithms. We're not experts on that. We're just a couple of lay people having a good time here. Um, but it helps us out. So you can also follow us on Instagram. And we got a little surprise coming here in just a moment at the end of the video. So we're not going to go away yet. Let's close it. All right. We are excited. That's where we're going to close out. And as mentioned, we have a giveaway. So we're going to tell you how you can win this and what the requirements are, because they're pretty, pretty serious. But at any rate, as you all know, these are my go-tos, okay? Whenever we're cooking on the trail fire, whatever we're doing, same set right here. I love it, we've been using it for years. We want to give it to you as one of our viewers and subscribers. Here's the requirement. As you watch the video, there is something from the very beginning to right now to the end that has changed about me. I'm still talking a lot, so that's not it, okay? I'm not gonna give you any more clues. There are three things that changed about me. If you can name them all, they don't have to be any particular order, and you were the first to name it, leave it in the comment and you hit it right, we'll get connected with you and we'll ship this to you free of charge. We'll pay for the shipping anywhere in the continental US, including Hawaii. So stay tuned, thanks for joining us, subscribing. Hit the thumbs up, give us a like, um, only if you like it and uh, subscribe and we're going to continue to grow this together. Appreciate y'all. Peace out from this beautiful area here in Oregon.